thing come up. We're currently now recording. Okay. All right. I want to call to order the Park and Rec Advisory Board meeting and Harbor Management Commission. Um, to start the meeting, usually we have the public comments and we have someone presenting to us today, uh, Mr. Morgan Fizell. Did I say the name right? Yes, you did. Yeah, well, we, we do that so that you don't have to hang around for the whole meeting. Uh, so certainly, uh, I know you had a presentation and um, uh, you can go to it, go ahead. And can we just wait a minute because Suzanne's coming in? Okay. Suzanne, can you hear us? Good. And you're on mute? You're good? I am. Okay. How are right. you? Super. Good. Okay, so everybody put themselves on mute besides uh, Morgan. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Morgan Fazell. I'm a resident of Weathersfield. I live in the last house on Main Street as you enter the Cove uh, parking lot and park. Um, in the last year or so, I stood up a service-disabled veteran-owned small business to give one-on-one -on -one boat training and charters in the area. Um, I have since went ahead and got the proper credentials and my captain's license and various other things um, done. And so I'm here today because I, I would like to use the boat launch and, and the dock at the Cove uh, on a very part-time basis um, for the purposes of me giving that one-on-one uh, -on -one boat training and, and charters. Um, there's, there's really no one else in central Connecticut that offers boat training. Um, there is one other gentleman that you're all aware of um, that, that is in the area doing charters uh, with his pontoon boat, but uh, his focus and, and, and the type of work and, and the charters that he does are, are really very different from what I'm looking to do. Uh, charters is really a, a second, you know, it's not my primary focus. My primary focus is one-on-one -on -one boat training for entry-level boat training for people that are interested in and in maybe getting a mooring from the town or, or, get, or using the cove since it's right here. Um, for charters, I differentiate myself from Captain Bill um, because I, I have a, a very different type of boat. I have a 19 foot bow rider. Uh, it's a 2018, it's new. And, and that's really the type of boat that a, a young family would want to use if they were getting into boating. Um, and, and so the charters that I might do, if, if anybody's interested, is maybe go for lunch down, down to Rocky Hill um, at Shad Row, or go to uh, Harbor Park, or the Blue Oar down in, in East Haddam, uh, that type of thing, like longer, uh, personalized type of, of charters. Um, so that's why I'm here today. I'm, I'm here today because on a very part-time basis, I want to use some of your assets. I am a full-time federal employee and for Department of Defense in East Harvard. Uh, so I'm really, that is my full-time gig. Uh, aside from that, I also, I'm in the Army National Guard. So I, that takes up quite a bit of my time. So roughly once a week, you know, my, my initial sales goal or plan is, is to give one hour of training per week, leaving from uh, Weathersfield Cove. For now, that's just a part-time goal. Um, and so I'm here to present that, to tell you about that and answer any questions that you might have. And Dan, I'd just like to, we had another person come in on a phone and I'd just like to identify them before we move forward. Sure. So we have someone uh, on phone number 860-810-7116. Just if you could give me your um, name and address. Yeah, hi, Kathy. Steve Randall, 35 Beverly Road, and you have the number. Okay, terrific. That's right. Thank you. Getting some feedback there. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions now, um, I'd be happy to answer them. So uh, 
just ask something very basic. Um, so this is a business, right? You're running, a, there'll be charge fees and everything else associated with this, right? Yes. Okay. So none of this is volunteer. We are trained, I don't know, anyone uh, that wanted to, or, or it's, there's going to have set fees that you're going to charge? So there are some things that, you know, right now, I've done some paid advertising through Facebook, through, through, through all the... Did I, did I need to run it? Okay, so um, yes, so to, to answer your question, Dan, um, it's a for profit business. Um, but really, before any of that even starts to happen, I really need to um, make the community aware that this even exists and that then I it's a, available. Um, so for right now, like I, I was signed up for the Memorial Day Parade, which was canceled. I was signed up for the Heirloom Market Fair, which was canceled. Um, I'm participating in the local farmer's market for the first half of the season every Thursday. Uh, so there's different things that I need to do first to just let the public know in general that I am here and that this service is available. Mm -hmm. um, and to help promote that and push it, I I'll probably be offering um, free charters to if if there's if there's a family that's interested, we're sort of on the fence with using the cove and and getting into boating and they want to experiment and they they don't know if they want to invest in the training. Um, I might take them out um, w w for no charge for a half an hour or an hour just to see if it's something that they they're interested in. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it does. I think the, the board needs to know because if it was an all volunteer thing, um, then I think the town would look at it one way, but if it's a for-profit business, then the town's gonna look at it another way. So they probably would have to set something up as far as payments and, and, and things that way. So that's why I asked them. Does and anybody- And if I could hold you for a minute, we just had someone else come in. Okay. I'm just going to admit them. And let me just get to them. Hi, this is Kathy Bagley. You've come into the park board meeting. Can you just identify yourself and give us your address? Uh, uh, I think we're all set. They hung up. <laughs> Crank call. Kathy, I have a quick question, I, and I think Dan might have just answered it, but we need to basically go over this because it is a commercial enterprise and not just private use of the dock like a regular citizen would. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And what we would, what we would usually do um, is that we would, as we would, we would meet with the person ahead of time, which we did by phone this time, get all the information, uh, bring it to the park board, and, and you get to discuss it. And in the past, what you've done is you've looked at something that was something you were interested in. We'd look at it as a pilot program for a season, see how it worked. And you would allow the staff to negotiate a fee based on the use. Gotcha. Thank you. I'm gonna go back off video and finish my dinner. <laughs> the, um, I have a question, Dan, if I could. Sure. Um, are you exploring other towns or is Weathersfield where you really want to have home base? Are you looking at a, a mooring or are you going to trailer it every time you want to put it in or what, what's kind of your plan for the boat storage and stuff? So I've lived here at 538 Main Street, which is my, there is no, no house is closer to the boat ramp and the dock than mine. Uh, that's where my house is. And thus far for the last couple of years, I've kept my boat on a trailer in the yard. Um, it stays clean that way and, and it's easier to get fuel at the gas station and go to the car wash and stuff with it. Um, so I would continue to do that same thing. Um, I, I would be keeping it on the trailer in my yard and if and when someone wants to train uh, or, or wants a charter, I would be bringing it across the street to the boat launch 
uh, and I'd be going from there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that, that would be your kind of place of operation in, you know, from Weathersfield, which makes sense if you live right there. You know, there have been people last year, there was somebody uh, that wanted to get to know Candlewood Lake down in Danbury. So I did tow down there. Um, I, I have gone out in Long Island Sound and, and Essex and, and other areas, and I do have that available. So if, if customers um, just bought a house on a lake somewhere and they want to get familiar with the lake uh, and they want to use the GPS or they want to use depth finders and, and charts and things because they're not aware of uh, under underwater obstacles and stuff like that, um, that's something that I'm willing to, to do. Um, but for the most part, 99% of the time, I would be right here operating out of my house. So Kathy, was, is the intent, and maybe for both of you, is the intent tonight just to kind of present this and then we'll come back because obviously we're in the boating season. I'm sure Mr. Fazell wants to get this going sooner than later, I'm, I'm guessing, but it's more a presentation tonight and then we would get back and discuss it further. Or is that kind of the goal tonight? Well, I would, what I would look for is if the board gave us direction to move forward with him, we could work with him on negotiating a fee as a pilot program so that we could observe it, see what his use is, and then um, continue to move forward with it, actually allowing him to do it if you felt it was an idea that worked for the, the Cove boat launch area. But as far as fees, et cetera, this is kind of something first time. I don't believe we have really have anything set up or any policy or guidelines. It's kind of it's new for all of us. Well, we've worked with the other charter company that the, the boat company that we already have given permission to operate at the Cove. So we have a guideline that we follow with that, or as we would with any park property that we would allow people to come in and basically take a permit for the use and pay for it. So we would follow those guidelines, but because it's so new, we bring it to the board to start with. If you think it's a good idea that we move forward with it, then we would sit down and do our usual procedure of granting a permit for the use. And we would do it based on what uh, we thought the use was and he would be working with us to let us know what his use is. So, um, can I have a motion? Sure. Unless anybody's got any other comments. I motion to approve. Okay, great. I have a second. Dan, for, dis for discussion purposes, mm -hmm. you may want to ask, we do have a member of the public, and he may want to speak to this or to something else. All right. Steve. You want to talk well, about I already knowledge? passed my, uh, hi, yeah, Steve, I'm already passed my information thoughts on the Kathy, whatever you guys decide. You know, I'm not in favor of any commercialization without plan being in place. And beyond that, it's up to y'all as a committee. I respect that. Okay. And Dan, maybe I can read into the record uh, Steve Randall's email. Sure. Yeah. I don't think I. Do we have copies of that? I don't think we. Uh, no, I got that today. Okay. I can't. I will send it out to you. But if you, I'll read it into the record now. Okay. That sounds good. Hey, Steve said, um, "Hi, Kathy. Trust you and your staff are able to stay safe." Appreciate your team's extra efforts to get through all this for tonight's harbor slash parks and rec discussion as to boat training request. I am opposed to any commerce at Cove Park and Harbor until formal written rules, regulations, guidance with public review and comment is completed. That said, when the appropriate regulations are in place and can foresee some level of appropriate commerce, Otherwise, we, in parentheses, town, may have to grandfather as regulations are finally established. And grandfathering is not an even approach. And that's Steve Randall. Thank you for your comments, Steve. Um, you know, this is a little bit different than commercial things. You're not setting up a booth down there. You're basically walking onto a boat. Um, so, my feeling is, I don't, and I want to hear from the rest of you, my feeling is we should probably go ahead with this on a pilot basis to keep an eye on it. Um, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but... Um, Can I talk about this real quick? Sure. So, as I said earlier, 
no house or property is closer to the boat launch or, or ramp than my house. Um, I live at 538 Main Street. I've lived here for a couple years. I already bring my boat out three or four times a week. I'm already doing it on a personal, uh, on a personal level. Um, I'm bringing my family and my, my seven-year-old daughter out and my friends, my family. It's, I'm already doing it three or four times a week. Um, I can't tell you how many unqualified people I see dropping their boats off their trailer. Just last weekend it happened uh, with the roller trailers. Somebody dumped their trailer, did it incorrectly, and, and their boat uh, slid down the concrete ramp and, and they destroyed the bottom of their boat and their engine. Um, last year I towed in uh, five different people from the river because they're going out and these, you know, they're going on Craigslist and stuff and they're, they're buying these family boats for 500 bucks, a thousand dollars that should not be on out on the water. Um, there's accidents happen out there all the time. So I think if anything, um, just me being qualified and having the proper credentials and being available to assist people, which I'm already doing and, and already going out, nothing's different. So we can wait and we can put all the regulation in the world in place and we can cross our T's and dot our I's, but I'm already doing it. Nothing's different. Nothing's going to change. And, and regarding, uh, you know, you already have slip away rivers tours doing something far more significant. You have, you know, 20, 30 passengers, 20, 30 passengers parking their cars in your parking lot and, and crowding the dock and getting on this massive pontoon boat that's equivalent to a school bus, and, and, and they're taking this out already. I mean, so that, there's a lot of risk with that. A lot more risk and a lot more concern with a school bus with 20 or 30 passengers versus me continuing to do something that every other family in town that has a boat is already doing. There's no increased risk at all whatsoever. Uh, and if anything, there's reduced risk because I'm around assisting people on my own time. Uh, so that's, that's my response to what was, what's been said. Buffy, by approving this or uh, allowing this, are we, um, if, are there documents and liability hold harmless clauses and things that the, um, that the organization would, would sign so that we wouldn't be part of any sort of lawsuit that might occur if there was one uh and the same question goes for the other company that has the charter relationship with us that is correct we require all of that as part of the, the process so that all comes in we have we would have that and part of it is when they submit their insurance certificate it <clears throat> it has to sh hold the town um as an additional insured within that process. So we go through all of that. Kathy, I think the, the other thing is, um, and I don't want to delay it if we're going to approve it, but we want to make sure we know what we're approving. If, if there is policies and stuff you already have, I'm not sure any of us have ever um, seen them, so to speak. So it might be helpful at least for at least me personally or anybody else to at least know what we kind of already have for guidelines um, if they, if, since they are in place. And I think, you know, Mr. Randall's comment, as far as um, what we can or can't approve for what goes on down there, um, you know, I, you know, I think the point's certainly well taken there that the, the public should have some input, but, you know, are we restricted? I mean, do we need to get, you know, do we need, Obviously, we haven't, but would we, should we, or need to get, you know, public hearing or any public comment? I mean, these are public meetings, and this this meeting was published. So I think if anybody, like Mr. Randall, came on tonight to voice his opinion, anybody has that right because they're public meetings, even if you didn't have a hearing. So as far as the public knowing about these things, I would think that that's all part of this process anyway. There's nothing that's being hidden about this meeting or what we approve or disapprove anyway. Um, Kathy, I've got a question too. Um... So if there's fees associated with this, does this have to be approved to the council? 
No, when we do fees for different park properties, we do it based on the use and what, what we see out there. So generally that doesn't usually go to council. Nothing of, this is a smaller scale. So it's not, it's, we've done this as part, this is, this is uh, permissions given through the ordinances that we currently have in effect. Okay. Kathy, did uh, the tour boat that is presently in operation at the Cove, I don't recall, did, did the owner of that company have to come before the board? It did, yes, it, a number of times. Yep, we started with the park board. Okay. And, and were any guidelines developed before then or after then for any businesses like this to operate? Again, we work with each individual group that comes to us that, that asks for permission. We have a permit process. I could certainly send you all that. It's, we make sure we ask the right questions so that they put in letter form exactly what it is that they're asking for and what, what their insurance is. So we, have, we give them a set of questions and that's the letter that you received in your packet. So that's the starting point. And the reason we look at pilot programs is to, if we feel it's something that's worthwhile, then we, we, we bring it to the board because sometimes it could stop at the staff level because we say that's just not appropriate for the park or whatever property that they're looking at. So then it comes to the park board for their review and guidance and then staff puts it in place. Kathy, is the permit uh, annual permit? Every year they'd have to get. Well, when we would say it's a per, it's an, a pilot program, which is what I would recommend. That's uh, you get to do it for this season, working with staff and working out any issues that might arise. And then if we determine that it's something to go forward, we would come back to you next year for uh, an official approval after we give you an evaluation of the program. Any other comments or? Okay. Um, I, I have just one last thing to say. Uh, Morgan seems like a great guy and for his, where he lives and what he's been doing, he seems like an I ideal person to have um, make our cove a better place, boating a better uh, activity. Um, but one thing that Steve Randall does bring up that makes me think, you know, if, if we have a blanket uh, okay for people to start up businesses. I, I think we should be looking at guidelines for future, you know, reference because once you allow one person to do something and another person to do something, now you're kind of opening the door and um, it, it's difficult to be strict applicant by applicant by applicant versus having blanket rules and regulations. Um, I know the individual that has the tour boat, I don't haven't had much feedback for it after reading um, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Morgan Fitzel's uh, letter and description of what he does. It sounds ideal for the boating community at the Cove. I, I think uh, um, to the area and um, but I, I just I'm concerned about future applicants and how they're going to be handled. Um, Tyler. Tyler, can you? I got a question for you if you're there. Yep. Um, they talked about, wasn't there some type of committee or something that's going to be formed for um, development around the cove? And were, were these type of guidelines and things be addressed through that committee? Or I, I would assume so. I'm not a member of that committee, but I forward along any info that I'm Okay, I don't know if an actual committee yet, but I definitely heard something was happening in that sort of way. Yeah, but, um, okay, so any other comments? Okay, so at this point, I think we should take a vote. And um, the motion is about a pilot program, right? We're talking just the pilot program for basically the summer, you're talking about the summer into the fall. All right, so, um, can somebody restate the motion? I make a motion to approve this request. I will second 
Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any 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 noes? Okay, Rick. Now should we uh, approve uh, uh, Mr. Purcell's ability to negotiate a pilot program with the town? They're going to be, in other words, he's got the green light as far as we're concerned to negotiate with you, Kathy. And 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 I would just ask maybe the next meeting, Kathy, if you could bring along some of the guidelines that you're going to be discussing, just so we're at least aware of them. I know it's after the fact, but it would be helpful, I think, for us. And who seconded? Tom. Tom. Yeah. So, I mean, this would have to fit in eventually with whatever guidelines and things are set up uh, through that other town committee. Everything would have to fit in together, obviously. So, um, it's definitely a, a pilot program and, and, and how things fit in together with a story down the road. And I guess one other suggestion, Kathy, and I, I assume the, and the Harbor Master is not on tonight, but um, perhaps they should be certainly involved, not necessarily with negotiation, but at least know what's going on because they are obviously the ones that oversee that operation. Yep, and Mike Osmian had thought he'd be here tonight and got called into work unexpectedly. And okay. I have his report for you later. Okay. All right, I think we're good. Morgan, um, in, in touch with Kathy, can you get a chance? You can stay for the rest of the meeting or you can leave, it's, it's up to you. Well, let me take a second just to thank everybody uh, for your time and your consideration. Uh, I think this is a great thing. I, I'd like to see more people get out there and, and use this park. It's great, you know, the investment that was made in the new boat ramp and, and the nice docks and and all the empty moorings that I see the last couple of years, um, it, it just really be very exciting to see it uh, build up a little bit and, and for more people to use these things. So uh, thanks again for your time and consideration. consideration. And uh, Kathy, I'll look to hear back from you uh, sometime during the week. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch base and begin the process. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Okay, we're still in the public comments section. So, Steve, um, uh, anything else to add or to talk about? Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity. And uh, I, I learned a lot just now, Kathy. I didn't realize how pilot programs were established. That was very informative. Thank you. And I think we can build the uh, it's it's too bad the harbor master is not able to attend today because he could have built on mr fassel's comments as to the uh, i'm gonna call it the haphazard nature of the supervision down there that's that's occurring it sounds a little dangerous at times and, and and i know we're just you're just starting up to get organized and set up traffic patterns which by the way i think are better than last year but there's still obviously some growth work going on, but the Harbor Master needs to be aware of these problems that were just pointed out for safety reasons. So I'm just going to listen to the rest of the meeting for catch up over the last couple of months. Thank you. And Steve, I'm just going to mention that Derek, our assist, our deputy Harbor Master just joined the meeting. Derek, I don't know if you can hear me. No, it's actually my tea. Kathy? Yes. It's uh, Derek from IT Support. Oh, oh, wrong Derek. Sorry about that. <laughs> Too many uh, I'm just here in case you need me. <laughs> oh, okay. Didn't realize that. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update the name. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, Steve. It isn't the Deputy Harbor Master. <laughs> okay. Our IT people are helping us out tonight, too. As I said, this yeah, is fine. Good for you. <laughs> All right, Steve, I'm going to put you on mute if that's okay. Yes, leave me on mute, please. Okay. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the um, minutes of February 27th. Um, and that was the one with the um, all the sports groups that, that uh, made comments and everything. So I don't know if anybody sees any changes or is it good? I move to approve. I will second that. I can't hear. 
Mike moved to approve. Who second? Tom. Tom seconded. Everyone, all in favor for the February 27th? Aye. 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 All right. That passes. Now I'm looking for the, the next one. Oh, okay. The next several meetings were canceled. So that was the last meeting we had. Um, monthly report. We got February, March, and April. And, you know, and if anybody has any comments on those, I don't really see anything that jumps out at me. So. The Keen, I see the Keen Road Race is on here for June seventh. Is that canceled, or is that going forward? I think so. I, I haven't heard officially, but I believe that's the case. And we're waiting to hear that we allow the groups to make that decision. But then we encourage them that it can't happen anyways. Okay. I think they're going to do a virtual run. All right. Okay. Anything else? To, oh, the fireworks are canceled, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Alan or Buck Wolf Day at, at the Nature Center, June 6th? That's been canceled. That's been canceled. All right. The parade's been was canceled. Uh, what else is on here? Okay. And some of these other things we're going to talk about as, as we go along. All right. Um, letters and announcements. Anything, Kathy? The only thing that came in was Steve's email. Okay. And you'll get that to all of us. I will get that out to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, old business. What do we have uh, for old business? We're kind of... I didn't oh. have anything unless commission members did. Yeah, I'm, the only thing I want to uh, talk about was, um, I think when you met with the uh, different sports teams, uh, we asked, I think, for a line of communication to be established. Wasn't that a, are we, were you going to provide to us how everybody was going to communicate to either the um, facilities people or, or to you people? We know most, most of it's for Rachel with you guys, but wasn't... Am I wrong here? Am, am I remembering things incorrectly? Anybody? I, I think you wanted us to make sure that communications were set up, that we were talking to the, we, Parks and Rec was talking to the right people in the sports leagues. Yeah. And communication got better. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's been no sports, so we don't know if things got better or worse. Or... Oh, we're resting the fields well. <laughs> That's right. That is true. I did, I did get a report from maintenance about what they've done to the fields just to give the board an update. I could do it here or under new business, whatever you'd like. Um, you can do it here. I, I spoke with them because originally, if you remember, if I have my months right, March was a really nice weather month and then April, not so good. But it was the first year they were able to get all the fields up and ready to meet the, the demands of the spring season. And then everything got canceled. Oh. And as Mike said, they are resting the fields. And also they've seeded, they've fertilized, they put lime down. Um, they're going to be aerating. They're going to go back and seed again. So they are doing a lot of work when they had gotten the ball fields up. They brought in new infield material for all the fields, leveled it all out. And they were really proud of the fact that they were ready to go. It was the first time because of the May, March weather that they were ready to go. And then April kind of that cr was crazy weather. But um, so the fields are resting. And if you drive by them, you could actually see green grass. You're, that's true. Um, have you relayed what you just to us, to the uh, different sports groups? So they understand, you know, you're listening to what they're saying. Have we relayed just to the sports group for an email out and said, this is what we did this spring. We know you didn't play on the fields, but we did all this work. And of course you, you know, you can't play on it. But yeah, they, that would be good. 
They're aware of it because they've been watching. They've been okay. hoping there'll be a change in what we do. And we honestly don't know how that will play out. Okay. Kathy, is there anything more that they would like to do and maybe because of finances or something else that they're not allowed to do that we should be aware of? Probably, um, we, we were, we were going to, we, we have some money set aside to replace some ball field fences, um, to do some fencing work with backstops and things, but sort of things were put on hold just because of the, um, pandemic. And we were asked, um, not to do any capital projects. So we're, we're in just a holding pattern to see how um, things play out because we had gotten quotes to do uh, backstops. We were going to attend to the Standish tennis courts. So we haven't, we haven't done those yet. As far as the groups asking for things that we haven't been able to do, so a lot of the, the regular minor spring requests that came in, they actually did have time to do. Um, Probably what we didn't do was like the, um, at Greenfield, they had talked about the warning track and things of that nature. They'd done some work on it. So they were, they were getting everything ready to go. So I, I'm not aware of anything of a bigger nature to look at right now that isn't, you know, a $50,000 project. So the biggest difference, obviously the fields weren't getting used, but as far as being able to do the work this year, COVID had a, had a role in it, but did, did the park staff and, and some of those maintainers, were they working, you know, half crew on one week and half off? I'm just curious. Yeah, they were doing a, a rotating schedule of half the staff um, and they, they split it up. It wasn't a week and a week, but they had a whole set schedule that maybe three days on, two days not on, that kind of thing where they did split the work crews in half. So I guess what that tells me, and maybe it's, you know, I don't know if it's significant or not, but um, they really didn't have the hours that they would have had prior to COVID, and we achieved all of that work, albeit, I mean, the fields got rested, that helped, but so I guess it connects the dots for me, because if it was, you know, a labor issue that they, they were short-staffed, et cetera, and they couldn't do all the work, that kind of blows that theory out of the water. Well, they had the weather in March. That was the really big thing because in March, early March, this was before the pandemic struck. So we had all that crazy nice weather that was like June yep. weather. Yep. They got a real jump when they knew that weather was here. They got a real jump on it. Right. I think it more had to do with the weather than the work crews because they were, they were hustling with that nice March weather. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Okay. I thought one of the topics that we talked about um, regarding communication with the sports teams in the field um, was not so much to create a mainstream method from the leagues to the um, parks and rec, but to see the really to see physical services response to parks and rec. So like a sports team says there's this hole in this field, they call Rachel, right? And then Rachel calls physical services. And what the piece of communication that I thought we were missing was physical services actually responding back saying that they actually did it. Um, so that Rachel could respond to the sports team that it's been handled. So I thought the, the conversation, are you having trouble hearing me? No, a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm listening. I can hear you. I thought the idea of creating that line of communication was not so much for the sports teams to communicate with Parks and Rec, but rather for Parks and Rec to communicate to physical services and then physical services respond back to Parks and Rec that it's been addressed. I thought that was the missing link in that communication that we wanted to address. That, that seemed to me like one of the topics out of that big conversation that really needed to be um, neatened up a little bit. Um, and I thought that, that we were hoping to be able to create some sort of more mainstream method of 
communication between the different um, departments, civil services and parks and rec. Has anything been done with that or have you, have you started a conversation or is it just because of COVID we haven't been able to or how's that going? Well, it's a mix of both when, again, I'll go back to February and March, uh, more so the, um, the, the kind of the March season when we had all that nice weather, we were talking with the different sports groups about what they wanted to see and a Little League is an example where they met with Little League people out at the greenfield to talk about their uh, batting cage, for instance. So we, we were able to get the people, the, the, the users together with maintenance to discuss what the issues were. And then we also had the engineering um, director there to, it had to do with a structural thing they were looking at. So it was able to have everybody at the field at the same time. And once that happened and they developed a, a plan, they actually moved forward and did that plan, but then we didn't open anything. So, so we haven't had that you're in season and these are when the issues are popping up, but it is something we're working on with um, physical services for that immediate response back. So we've seen improvement, but I can't tell you that we've done it in season. But I can tell you going through the pandemic and having to respond to things on a daily basis, what we're seeing out there and getting maintenance out there, they've been very, very responsive. It's been, uh, it's been just um, call them up, pick up the phone, you got to get out and do this. And it's been done right away. So I think that, I think that we're building better communications to get that, that feedback right away that yes, we can do it or no, we need to bring someone else in. Thank you. And I did have one more thing, Kathy. I know every year um, around the reservoir, usually there's ruts and everything else around there with that checked out by the uh, physical service department to make sure everything was okay. I know we run into that every year, every other year, it seems. Yeah, we, it's a it's a, it's an ongoing problem every year just to get up there and maintain it because um, in April we had all that rain, so um, I can't give you an update on it what it is today. So I I can get back to you on that. Okay. I don't know where we stand with it right now. I know that they went out and looked at it, but I haven't been involved in what if if it's been fixed for getting it ready for the season. All right. Okay, any other comments before we go to new business? All right. Um, uh, uh, new business, the first thing was uh, Morgan's presentation. We already did that. The next thing is the status of uh, the park's budget. So Kathy was going to give us an update on uh, that. I just want to let you know, certainly Tyler's here. and They're going through deliberations now with the council. And as you can imagine, we canceled a lot of things in the late winter and spring. And now moving forward, we're looking at um, what we're going to be doing with um, programs that are currently both in the budget and are self-sustaining. So that'll be something we'll see as we go through. I know, as you can imagine, it's a difficult budget year for next year. And a lot of our park and rec capital improvement projects to my knowledge, have not made it through the budget uh, process at this time. So, um, but I, I know council's working on it and will be coming out with a uh, budget shortly. Okay. So I, I yes, yeah, there's a, what I saw was pretty much everything um, rec department related was kind of cut, but I don't think it's been finalized yet. To my knowledge, it is not finalized. All right. All right, very good. Um, any comments on that? No. Um, we did want to talk a little bit about some of the summer programs, Kathy, and maybe can elaborate. Oh, wait, I think we got, oh, I thought. Oh, okay. I'm trying to see if Tyler, I, I don't know if he's yep. muted or not. Oh. Yep, I, I just wanted to add a point. Um, we have not finalized anything. We're actually deliberating tonight and tomorrow morning. 
Um, and we are looking at a vote on adoption of budget tomorrow night. So we are really taking this all the way through. Um, one thing I, I do want to add, because there were some rumors swirling around, was that um, I don't know how closely people have followed the budget process. And there were some scenarios posed to us. And I believe the fourth and final scenario posed to us essentially gutted the entire Parks and Rec Department and Youth and Social Services. I know that caused some panic, but um, that was, you know, I talked to the leadership. That was never in the cards for us. Um, you know, gutting Parks and Rec and Youth and, and Social Services wasn't really an option. Um, so I, I, you know, don't know what the final product will be, but I, I can assure you that we will not be gutting the department. That's good news. It's part of the very little good news we have to offer at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, we, we know there's some tough decisions to be made. So we know that. Um, all right. Status of some programs. So I don't even know if the budget's not finalized. Um, Kathy, I don't know, you know what is being discussed and what isn't being discussed. But maybe you can update everybody on what we kind of know. Sure. Um, to start with, to look at the summer programs for this upcoming summer, we had to make the difficult decision to cancel all the camp programs. Uh, it was a heavy heart that we did that. We all got together in the, the departments in the health district to try and be consistent. After talking with the health district and also with town administration and the park and rec directors in each of the towns and reviewing all the guidelines that came out from the state, from the Department of um, uh, Public Health and from CDC and the National Rec and Park Association, we were consulting with everyone to try and figure out, based on what they said, could we do it? And it was just very, very difficult. And we didn't feel the risk was worth it to be bringing children into a, um, a building or a camp based on everything that we needed to do with them. And <clears throat> it took us probably two weeks to get to that point. And we made that decision just this week. And so we, we will not be running camps. We are gonna be doing some um, online things and some special kinds of things where we're gonna try and do family events and just things that people can, families can do, whether it's in their backyard or come to Park and Rec and pick up a, um, some fun things to use to play with for a week or something like that. We've got staff that are really putting together some ideas and looking at some online programs that we can bring in with outside vendors that have the ability to at least keep kids entertained for a while. But putting kids in the buildings that we have and meeting the guidelines that were set up is just extremely difficult. And it kills me to say that as a park and rec person because we feel we can, can handle anything and figure out a way to meet requirements. And it just wasn't gonna happen with what's going on. So that's the camp piece. Kathy, are, has, um, are they looking at, I assume, because this all has significant budget impacts a lot on the revenue side, or you have to make adjustments on what your revenue expectations are if you don't do the programs? Yes, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of it. <clears throat> we look at the, the revenue projections for this fiscal year because we canceled programs starting the middle of March. And in the spring, we bring in a lot of revenue when we're selling pool passes for the summer that right now is not coming in. Right. So that impacts this year and it will impact next year because each of the camps bring a portion of revenue to the, the town general fund that we have to make up. And um, the camps themselves, the majority of them are self-sustaining. So they're not in the operating budget, but they still bring in revenue that helps us meet our, that helps us meet our revenue projections for the town for the budget. And I assume, you know, most of the staff, you're not bringing on the, the seasonal staffing, if you will, that you budget lifeguards, et cetera. Obviously you're not paying them. They're not getting paid for it because they're not working. 
Correct. So in this year's budget, there, there will be a savings. The indoor pool is a good example. We shut it down in the middle of March. So we didn't have, so we're, I'm hoping the savings I have match to the revenue I'm losing in this year's budget. And next year's budget, we're going to look at it as we go along. And we already adjusted those revenue projections for next year. Okay. Complicated process. All right. Can you give us an update on the pool? Yep. So that was the camps. Um, the pools were still, we're still reviewing all the information that's coming out. Um, part of the difficulty with the pools, we're, we're working to try and run them. We think we have a better shot at Mill Woods than we do at Willard because uh, part of the guidelines, recommendations, policies that are coming out have to do with social distancing on the land. And in Millwoods Beach, we have more area than we would on the Willard pool deck. So we're looking at that. We're talking with the health district director. I can tell you the health district director is always going to err on the side of, of health and safety, which is a really good thing. And he was, you know, he'll say to us that He's recommending we not open the pool, but he also knows the state is coming out with guidelines that says, this is how you can do it if you meet all these things. So we're going through all those things to see if we can meet them. And we're working on that right now. And we actually had a meeting today with him and other members of the town staff. Um, and the pools, everything comes up at that point in time. And with that, we're talking about if we can if we can work with them and meet these guidelines and they're good with us meeting those guidelines then we have the opportunity to open but he also told us today that the department of public health is told them they're coming out with more guidelines and we haven't seen those yet so it's a it's an ever changing day by day and again we're also talking to the other departments in our district to see, and right now we're uh, we're still holding out on trying to get a pool open, based on um, what we think the guidelines are today. We think we can meet, and we're going through them individually, piece by piece. But it's complex in what they're looking at because what they're saying is, you can come in, you can have a a, a square on the beach that you kind of stay in. And that could be about 10 by 10 feet, but then you have to be 15 feet from the next blanket if you could appreciate that. So we actually have our engineering department doing a grid for us of the Millwoods beach sand and the grass to see how many blankets we could fit in each square. So we're, we're, that's how we're approaching this. And I always finish my comments with always health and safety for the public and for the staff is going to be primary in how we make those recommendations and working with the health district. We think it's possible, but I don't know what DPH is going to come out with next. So that's why we have to be cautious as we move forward. And if we move forward, that will also impact how we're going to social distance inside the pool so that we're only letting so many people in at once and what is that number and we're working on that. And also, how are we gonna let people come to the pool? Is it gonna be by reservation? Are we, and we're looking at maybe we do a morning block that the pool is open, an afternoon block, an early evening block. So we're kind of brainstorming with staff now how to make it all work. That was a long explanation, but that's, that's what we're looking at. That was good, Kathy. Um, I know one of the things I've been seeing in the news, so they, they'll open Ham and Asset, but they won't open the bathrooms. So uh, has anything been mentioned? If something is opened, the restroom facilities would be opened or they wouldn't be opened or? We have guidelines on that too. Um, when I mentioned to you about blocks of swimming time, a morning, afternoon, and evening, mm -hmm. part of the guidelines is you shut down after the morning, you clean, open up for the afternoon, shut down again, clean, open for the evening, clean again at the end of the night. 
Millwoods doesn't have as many touch points as a Willard Pool would have. Yeah. Uh, so those are th those are the things we're looking at, and we, we have to evaluate all of that. All right, and then uh, we talked a little bit this afternoon, and all all the swimming lessons are canceled. Right? Yeah, we can't see yeah. having the ability to do that. The kids are too close together. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I've never gone through something like this where no. we're canceling programs, but we have to think of safety and health. Yeah. Uh, any other comments, anybody? No, I think what Kathy and I were talking about a little bit this afternoon was, um, you know, she was talking about a morning block and afternoon block and evening block. So the pool might actually be open if this does happen. It might be open maybe another hour or two in the morning. Um, if there's a good thing that comes out of this, I don't know that there is, but uh, that was it. <laughs> Kathy, the the level of um, cleaning that would be done in between these shifts, um, are the people who are going to be doing the cleaning going to be trained in how to properly clean? And I, I mean that very seriously. Um, like, the, the, they're generally young people, and not to say that they're not proper cleaners, but it, is there any sort of training that goes on? to ensure that the, the cleanliness is actually up to like health district uh, qualifications for clean? Yeah, what we would do is, and we've done this um, throughout this pandemic is um, the town is in charge of all the custodial staff for the schools. And, uh, and so we bring them in as experts to teach our people exactly how to clean there's a whole process of, of how you clean the materials that you use. We've done that already with all the deep cleaning we did, for instance, after we cleaned the, after we closed the community center, the Wells House, the nature center, a couple of our facilities. And um, we go through a training process with the supervisor of maintenance. And also we have to look at all the personal protective equipment that we need to provide for the staff as they're doing that cleaning. So there is a, a complete training process. Okay. Any other comments? And just one other thing I didn't mention is we are gonna, we are gonna register people for our online, we're gonna do our online fitness classes for the summer for both the residents and the senior citizens. So we'll be doing that as part of our registration process. But we, we were originally set to do our registration next Wednesday, June 3rd. And unfortunately, our registration software server has gone down and they're in the process of repairing it. And they're working on it now, but we weren't sure it would be up for next week. So we've pushed our registration date out to June 10th. Mm -hmm. So um, that's all gone out today on our website and Facebook page. And they're currently working on um, why it went down and what, how they can fix it. So yeah, we're having some interesting challenges. Yeah. All right, everybody good? All right, very good. Um, I guess the next thing on the agenda is the Solomon Wells House. Any uh, updates that were there any more repairs or were things completed or not completed or no, as I mentioned earlier, we've we've done deep cleaning there and we've canceled right now town buildings are still closed and we're following the governor's guidelines about right now you can only get groups of five together. So okay. um, so we've canceled program uh, programs or rentals in there and um have done the deep cleaning so that it'll be ready to go when we can open it. We are working with the farmer's market. They're gonna be changing and, and just doing it outside on the lawn, not having access to the interior of the, to the building itself. And they're following Department of Agriculture guidelines to run the farmer's market. I actually had a question, somebody at work asked me today. When is that starting, do we know? Uh, tentatively, June 11th. Okay. Very good. Kathy, following up on Dan's comment, um, so there's no porta potties around town either, then, because they would have the same issue, correct? 
Um, well, we do. We we don't have many porta potties out. I can tell you that the portalettes, uh, as part of the farmers market, we uh, will bring one in for the farmers market that will be cleaned that Thursday every morning for them to use. So that'll be there. They also have to look at sanitizing um, stations at the farmers market. So the portalette is there. Um, we also, but it, but the, the farmer's market's only open from three to six. So, um, so we're hoping we have to put one there just because, but we're also hoping people deal with it in different ways because you can clean it. And then the first person in, you just don't know. And, um, we also did put it, put two down at the cove this year and, um, we're getting them cleaned. Uh, much more frequently than we had in the past. So we're also looking at, at that, and that's why we're putting the two there. Thank that's you. all I envision at this time. Very good. Anything else? No. So, okay, board member comments. Anybody got anything to talk about or anything? No. All right. I was. Um, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Colleen, go ahead. I was curious um, if the Parks and Rec or uh, Social Services is doing anything for our senior citizens. Um, is anyone reaching out to um, the seniors that are members of the senior center and and checking on them and and asking if there's any sort of services we can help set up for them? That's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Actually, there's a lot going on. We actually have our senior center coordinator set up a group of volunteers. Um, she's got about 20 volunteers that every other week are calling, that have a call list for all the senior center members that are signed up on our membership list. And they're calling every week to check in and find out, are things good? Do you need anything? Um, someone just to talk to and um, and they're actually able to refer them to social services if there are issues and that has happened and they're also able to give them the update on hey the senior center has these online programs you can um, you can make an appointment to come get food we can provide financial assistance if that's what you need and you can talk to one of our social workers so that's one way it's happening also, we've got, um, they're doing rear reminder, we're purchasing, we always have purchased ads once or twice a month in the rear reminder, just letting seniors know about the activities going on. So we're, we're also doing that and just updating on what's going on, again, reiterating where they can go for support. And they've gotten a lot of good feedback. Uh, the volunteers have passed on to the senior center coordinator that they really like, why are you calling me? And I'm okay, but it's nice really to talk to somebody. So that's really worked out really well. And I give uh, Amy Miller, our senior center coordinator, a lot of credit. She's coming up with very creative ways to reach out to the seniors to make sure that they're, um, that they're okay. And we're even encouraging them to talk to their neighbors or, or, or anybody who calls to say what we can, what can they do? We tell them, if you got seniors in your neighborhood, let them know to call this number, we can assist. So we're doing everything we can to reach out. And I was even, I was amazed. There's a thousand, there's 1200 members and about 200 of them are out of town. So we're not calling the out of town people, but they're calling a thousand people every other week. That's just fabulous from my perspective. Yeah. And, it's really keeping us in touch with people. And we've been able to identify issues and needs. That's really great, thank you. Yeah, I, I skipped over something on the agenda. I just realized that the, uh, the farm, um, before this whole uh, pandemic started, we were just about ready to, um, I think recommend, town managers were ready to recommend um, a vendor that was to be chosen. I, that, as far as I know, has been put on hold. There's been no other meetings that I've been called to at this point. Um, and I think it depends on, on this budget, but I'm not sure that that's a priority at, at this point. I think it, you know, down the road a little bit, it, it might 
gain some steam again. But right now, I've we've had no meetings and I've had nothing of it, no communication or anything else. So um, I think that will progress next fiscal year a little bit. Right now, uh, it's not a high priority from what I see. There's certainly a bunch of other issues that the town council has to grapple with. Um, I don't know if Tyler can give us an update on anything, but uh, that's all I know about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, to be to be completely honest, right now our our full focus is is not only this year's budget, but we're also kind of preparing for a, a hell storm next year. Um, we we have to to grapple with the reality that we might see a huge reduction in state aid. Um, you know, we we have to grapple with uh, you know, what our rainy day fund is going to look like in a year because we might need to dip into it pretty heavily. Um, and so while we're, we're still trying to stay fairly well-rounded, we're, we're kind of mostly preparing ourselves for the worst case scenario. And then if we don't have a worst case scenario, we're, we're going to work our way back up to other issues. Very good. Um, working for the state too, uh, I have access to certain numbers that, that I get every month. So um, car sales are down, boat sales are way up, believe it or not. And I mean, way up. Um, so people are trying to do things at home and with their families. They're not going on vacations. They're kind of making their own vacation and pool sales are way up. So those are the two things that they're selling right now is pool, uh, pools and boats but nothing else is looking too good. The car sales were off about 60% in April. In May, they look like they're gonna be off about 30%. So, uh, you know, huge revenue losses there. So uh, that will translate into towns, cities and towns probably getting less money. So what Tyler said is 100% is true. Um, so that's any other comments or comments or no. Okay. Um, and that leads us to the Harbor Management Commission. And Kathy, I think um, you got a, a little bit of an update for us. Sure. The, um, the Cove boat launch ramp opened on um, Saturday, May 23rd. And uh, we actually worked with our engineering department and our physical services department to actually line some parking spaces down there because I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Cove was the, the preferred hangout for both residents and people from out of town and all the nice weather that we had. And um, it was attracting a lot of people that, if you can picture that area, there's no, there's no set parking plan and everybody was parking mm -hmm. wherever they wanted. So, um, so we knew we had to go in and do some things and it's a work in progress, but I found out that um, uh, I did hear from our harbor master that was down uh, all weekend down at the Cove on Memorial Day weekend. And it was good because a little rainy, a little sunny, a little cloudy. So it wasn't like they were overwhelmed down there. And the parking worked out, the parking spaces worked out okay. Uh, we've put some more in this week and we're going to continue to work on it and see if we can get it right. Now you got to appreciate that it's we're just using paint that will eventually wash away. So we're trying to look at some things to do it a little differently and make it a little more permanent. But before we make it permanent, a little more permanent, we wanna make sure we're getting it right so that we're getting the right parking. So we've put in spaces for uh, cars and trucks and their trailers that are, have the boats have long the long parking spaces. And then the car spaces are gonna be down the, the far end closer to the river. So that's kind of a work in progress. And it was better under control this weekend than it had been when we had no staff down there in previous days and weekends. So we are working um, to get that area, what I would call under control and have parking in the right way and everything. But it went well. Surprisingly, um, it is one of the areas that we are staffing and we can be open per the state. Um, the governor's executive orders. So we do uh, have um, uh, moorings. The Harbor Master Mike told me that we have uh, 11 moorings to date. I understand four more came in today to the uh, office. 
So, and we're, we average usually about 20 something. So it'll be interesting, Dan, to see if we have people that moor it, if there are more bar boats that are being registered. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. And um, Rachel, who oversees that operation, told me we sold season passes and took daily registration in for the boats and we took in $4,000. So a lot of people wanted to get their season pass and um, get out there on the river. So that was pretty interesting to at least see the boating is there and maybe that kind of matches what you were talking about, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, a little good news. So Kathy, so the, the uh, person that's collecting the fees, they're all set with PPE and stuff. They're, they're doing normal as if nothing were going on as far as collecting fees. There's no no changes in that other than the fact that they're set up to do it? Yes, we've got, they have the PPE, they have all the equipment that they need and they've been trained. And our concern obviously is taking the money and approaching the cars. So we've got a process in place for all of that. Yeah, it's a whole different world that we have to look at now. Okay, and, and the harbor master did say that things went well uh, over the weekend. And he reiterated what we said earlier about some people know how to launch their boats and some people don't. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we, we do have the harbor management plan on here. We're gonna, well, we were gonna talk about this, I think three months ago and we never really had a chance to. But I think um, if I can remember right, it was about enforcement and uh, wasn't that the part of the plan we were going to talk about? And but I think you had to talk to the police maybe and get some, imp and I don't know if you had a chance with everything else going on. Um, I put it on the agenda because if you, from the February meeting, we had discussed making it available to all the board members again and what were the changes that were proposed by the previous Harbor Master and to look at it. And talking with the current harbor master and with the police, the current harbor master is saying really, that's a, that's really that enforcement should be with the police and it should come from the police as to what ordinances they might wanna see put in place. And we can discuss more with the police what it is they're gonna need that's, that's not already in place to look at parts of that enforcement. And the harbor master told me, I was talking to Mike tonight, he said he'd rather see the police handle that end of it. And they deal with the moorings and what's going on in the cove and everything mm -hmm. and report all the issues that there may be to the police marine patrol. So I think it can be a work in progress that we, we have the plan, we'll look and work with the harbor master to look at those proposals, talk with the police, um, as I said, Rachel Mattioli, our recreation supervisor, works with the police marine patrol, also with the fire department and their boat there. And they all work together. And I think those are discussions they can have and then bring a recommendation to the board about what we would like to see to move forward if that's a direction that we'd like to go in. I think that would be the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, so I'm thinking, can we somehow, I'm going to say table this to maybe September and then have them, you know, a representative from the police uh, and along our harbor masters usually show up, have them come to the meeting and kind of go through everything with us so that we know what we're looking at. And then certainly if there are any other voters that maybe want to um, contribute to, to things too, but, um, you know, like Tom is out on the water all the time too. He, he, people that are, that are out there and see the things. I'm not a boater, so I don't really uh, know. But people that do boating on a regular basis, we'd like their input too. Oh, wait, is Tom talking? Hang on one second. Hold on, Tom. Uh, let's see, which one is he? Did that work? All right, he's on no. the mic. He's still muted. You muted me. There you go. You're good, Tom. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're seeing the harbor master suggested that as far as 
you know, giving out tickets or warnings, things like that, that that should be the police's hands and, st and not theirs? That's what he said to me today when we were talking. We can certainly explore that over the summer. And I think part of that is a uh, good, you know, a good idea. However, with moving violations, the police are rarely on the water. So, I, I mean, are they going to take down registration numbers, report it to the police, and then the police will respond? Or it, it seems kind of odd because the police aren't on the water with regularity. I think that that can be all things that we look at this summer and see what makes sense. What I did not mention is that uh, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection asked permission to put one of their uh, uh, deep uh, patrol boats uh, to have it um, docked on our uh, dock next to the harbor master boat and um, and they're the enforcement arm also and um, we talked with police and fire and they had no problem with it and it's actually going to be um, stationed beyond the if you can picture the dock that has the gate up and beyond the gate is the fire boat the police boat and the harbor master boat we're now going to put a, a deep marine patrol boat and they're going to come in and out of the cove. So we think that's going to help. Oh, oh absolutely. Um, I, I heard talk that they were asking about maybe putting the boat there, but it sounds like a done deal that they're looking to keep a boat there. We've given them permission. They, they asked us and we said yes. So um, whether or not it comes or not, I'm not sure, but that was the discussion. As far as enforcing the rules, done deal. Uh, they are the guys, if they're going to have their presence, um, I agree. Let the harbor masters worry about other things besides tracking down violators and all that, for sure. I, I think overall, I think the, the pendulum was swinging way over to too much enforcement um, initially, and you know, too little is not good either. So I think that... Um, Dan's thought about tabling it, I think is fine. We can certainly make it through the season. We have new Harbor Masters. I'm sure they can go out there to the deeps there. I, I would agree with Tom. That's probably the best thing that could happen there. Yeah. So I, I would, if you want a motion, I would move to table this and, and give us some time over the, over the uh, couple months. But I think the key is that this thing's been kicked around so many times. I think we really, we just need to put it to rest once and for all and hopefully really set the goal to get it done in the fall. I would second that motion, Mike. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Okay. All were in favor. And I think that. Um, I think that's it. I don't think we have anything else on the agenda. Any other comments, board member comments or concerns? I would move to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. Okay. All righty. One of these days we'll get together again. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks for all right, have a good night, everybody. everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.